Hi students and friends. This is your host and teacher Sayyid Ayazuddin Hedar. You are watching Learn and Teach by Sareyaz. So I am continuing my video session for past papers and I was doing 5070. This time I have selected variant 12 and it's of October November 2023. You all know that it's paper 1 multiple choice. It's of 1 hour. There are 4, uh, four 40 questions on this paper. With four possible answers, you have to choose the one best answer. Total mark is 40. Periodic table is printed in this question paper. Let's get started. Number one, a solid substance is placed in a flask. The flask is gently heated and the temperature of the substance is recorded at regular time intervals. The diagram shows a graph of temperature against time for this experiment. At which point does the flask contain both a solid and a liquid? You see, the straight line represents that the both the two states of the three will exist. So at this point, you must have at B, you must have solid and liquid state coexisting. So B must be the right answer for this question. Number two, a crystal of sodium chloride is dropped into a beaker of water and the crystal dissolves. There are four stages in this process. Number one, the water molecules collide with the ions in the crystal lattice. The ionic bonds in the crystal break. Number three, the ions move randomly in all directions until they are evenly spread throughout the solution. Number four, the ions continue to move randomly in all directions but remain evenly spread throughout the solution. At which stages is diffusion occurring? Now, what is diffusion? It's a random mixing, random mixing of the particle or movement of particle from higher concentration to lower concentration. So, if you look at this, there's a random movement of the ions so it must be three it must be three there's diffusion happening the water molecule colliding with the crystal it's not diffusion the breaking of the bond in the crystal it's not diffusion i mean the ions continue to move in all direction but even spread this is not diffusion diffusion has already happened so it must be three only so c must be the right answer for number two number three w is ethene X is air, Y is iodine, and Z is brass. Which row is correct? W is ethene. So ethene is a compound. So W is a compound. X is air. So X must be mixture. Y is iodine. It's a element. Molecule of the element iodine. What about Z? Z is brass, so it's also a mixture. Now it will become easier for you to choose from it. You can't have A or B as your correct answer. A, both A and B is incorrect. Either C is correct or D is correct. Now for C, they have mentioned W and Z as compound, but in D, they are saying W is compound and X and Z is a mixture, so D must be the right answer in this case. Number four, which statement about the isotopes of bromine is correct? A, they are atoms with the same number of electrons and a different number of protons. This is incorrect because isotopes have same number of electrons as well as same number of protons. B, they are atoms with the same number of neutrons and the same number of electrons. This is wrong. They don't have same number of neutrons. They do have same number of electrons, but neutrons are not same. What about C? They are atoms with the same number of protons and the same chemical properties. This looks correct to me. The reason is that isotopes have same number of protons and same number of electrons. Due to this reason, they have same chemical properties. D. They are atoms with the same number of protons and same physical properties. This is incorrect. The reason is that in isotopes, the number of neutrons are different. So they must have different physical properties, not same. So C must be the right answer for this question. Number five, which diagram shows a section of the ionic lattice of sodium chloride? So 
So in ionic lattice of sodium chloride, we have sodium ions and chloride ions. So each sodium ion is attached to four, uh, six chloride ions in this way. Or you can even say each chloride ion is attached to sodium ions in six direction, which is a coordination number for this in this way. Now, it will help you in solving the question. If you look, look at the choices, choice A seems to correct to me. What about B? B is incorrect. The reason is that they are showing all the sodium ions together and chloride ions together. It's not possible because positive positive ions repel each other as well as negative negative ions. So you must have alternate positive and negative ions. What about C? Now there's a mistake in C. In C, they are saying Cl is carrying positive charge and Na is carrying negative charge. So this is also incorrect. D. Cl is carrying positive charge and is carrying negative charge as well as we have four consecutive negative ions and four consecutive positive ions. So this is also incorrect. A must be the right answer. Moving to next question, number six. When dilute hydrochloric acid is added to aqueous lead to nitrate, a white precipitate of lead to chloride is formed. What is the ionic equation for this reaction? So dilute hydrochloric acid, we have HCl equals plus lead to nitrate. This is lead and this is the nitrate ion. Nitrate ion carries minus one charge, lead carries plus two charge. Ignore the charges. So it becomes PbNO3 whole twice. So we have PbNO3 whole twice. It's also in the aqueous state. It's a soluble salt. The products we are getting is lead to chloride. Lead to chloride, it means the formula must be PbCl. Where is Cl? Cl is in group 7. It must be carrying minus 1 charge and PB carries plus 2 charge, plus 2, minus 1, ignore the charges. Subscripts will be exchanged. So you will get PBCL2. So we'll get PBCL2. It's a white precipitate, precipitate, which means it must be in the solid state. The other product must be formed between H and NO3 and it must be HNO3 nitric acid and it must be in the aqueous state. Balance the equation, you have to put 2 here. Now its equation is balanced. Place 2 before HNO3. Now for the aqueous, what we will do? We will open up the formula of the ions for the aqueous states only, not the solid state. Leave the solid state. So what you will get? You will get 2H positive aqueous plus 2Cl minus aqueous plus pb plus 2 aqueous plus 2 moles of nitrate ion 2NO3 minus aqueous and on the product side you have 2 moles of H positive ion aqueous plus 2 moles of nitrate ion again aqueous and 1 mole of PbCl2 in the solid state. The spectator ions will be cancelled on both sides. We have H positive ion as the spectator ion. It is present on both sides as well as the nitrate ion. So we are left with 2 Cl minus plus Pb plus 2 gives Pb Cl2. So D must be the right, uh, must be the incorrect answer. Either A, B or C is correct. So on the product side, you are getting Pb Cl2 solid. So C must be the right answer in this case. Moving to next question, that's number seven. Which row shows a pair of molecules where the MR of compound X is exactly half that of compound Y? Now, what they are saying, we have a pair of molecules. The MR of X is exactly half that of compound Y. 
So what we will do, I will work out the MR of each. So we have in A, CH3, CH2, CH3. We have three atoms of carbon, hydrogen. We have eight hydrogen. So three multiplied by 12 plus eight. 36 plus 8, what you will get? We will get 44. Three multiplied by 12 is uh, 36. And if you will add 8 to it, what you will get? You will get 44. Fine. What about CO2? We have one atom of carbon. So you have 12 plus two atoms of oxygen. Two will be multiplied by 16. So again, you will get 12 plus 32. Again, you will get 44. So this is incorrect. What about B? CH3, CH2, Cl. We have C2, H5, Cl. 2 carbon means 2 multiplied by 12 plus 5 hydrogen, 5 multiplied by 1 plus 1 atom of chlorine, 35.5. 2 multiplied by 12 is 24, 24 plus 5 plus 35.5, 64.5, you must have 64.5. What about CH2, Cl, CH2, Cl? We have two carbon, four hydrogen, and two Cl. So two multiply by 12 plus four multiply by one plus 2 multiplied by 35.5. So 2 multiplied by 12 is 24, plus 4, plus 35.5 multiplied by 2 gives 71. 99. So this is also incorrect. So either C is correct or D is correct. What about C? We have CH3, CO2, H. C2, H4, and O2. So two atoms of carbon. So we'll multiply 2 by 12 plus 4 atoms of hydrogen. 4 multiplied by 1 plus 2 atoms of oxygen. 2 multiplied by 16 what we will get. 2 multiplied by 12 is 24. 24 plus 4 multiplied by 1 is 4. Plus 60 multiplied by 2 is 32. 32. We will get 60. What about CH3, CH2, CH3? I have already calculated for A. So it must be 44. This is also incorrect. So D must be the right answer. No need to do the working. For your convenience, I am doing, doing the working so that you will know whether the answer is correct or not. CO2, the MR is given. In Y, it's, it's 44. So in the question, they are saying MR of compound X is exactly half that of compound Y. So the MR of Y must be 44 multiplied by 2, 88. So let's do it. We have how many carbon? Four carbon, C4, hydrogen, five, six, seven, eight, eight, oxygen, two. So four multiplied by 12 for carbon plus eight multiplied by one for hydrogen, for oxygen, two multiplied by 16. So four multiplied by 12 gives 48 plus eight multiplied by one, eight. Plus 60 multiplied by 2 is 32. 
88. It's proof. So D is the right answer. 8. One volume of gaseous element X2 combines with an equal volume of gaseous hydrogen to form two volumes of a gaseous hydride. Gaseous hydride. What is the formula for the hydride of X? So one volume of gaseous hydride, uh, gaseous uh, element X2 combining with an equal volume of gaseous hydrogen to form two volumes of gaseous hydride. So they are saying equal volume. Equal volume means it must be one volume. One volume of H2 reacting with volume of gaseous element X2. And they are saying two volumes of gaseous hydride. So you will get 2HX. So formula must be HX. So B must be the right answer in this case. Number nine. Which reaction would produce the greatest volume of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure? MR of all of these is given. So we need to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide. The best way of doing this is to convert the masses into moles. Now, in one, they have mentioned we have excess of oxygen. So it means you have to work out the uh, moles of carbon. So one mole of carbon is producing one mole of CO2. So for one gram, the moles of carbon must be one divided by, here is carbon and 12 is its AR. So one divided by 12 gives Point zero eight three, point zero eight three. These are the moles, and these will be the moles for the carbon dioxide. So the moles for carbon dioxide must be this. What about the volume at RTP? We know that at RTP the volume must be twenty four dm cube. So you multiply. 0 0.083 into 24, 1.922, 1.922 dm cube. This is the volume for carbon dioxide for choice A. What about B? Thermal decomposition of 10 gram of calcium carbonate in the air. So calcium carbonate, MR of calcium carbonate is given. Where is calcium carbonate? It's air, it is, it's 100. So 10 gram, 10 gram divided by 100. 10 divided by 100, you will get 0 0.1, 0 0.1 mole of calcium carbonate. Look at the relationship between these. One mole gives one mole. So 0 0.1 mole gives 0 0.1 mole. 0 0.1 mole multiplied by 24. What you will get? 2.4. 2.4 dm cube. So that for sure that A can't be the right answer. B can be the correct answer. I don't know. We'll check from other choices, adding 10 gram of sodium carbonate to an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid. So again, we'll use sodium carbonate here. It's a limiting reactant for carbon dioxide. Look at the relationship. It's one mole producing one mole. So 10 gram of sodium carbonate produces 10 divided by MR of sodium carbonate is given. It's 106 divided by 106. 10. divided by 106, 0 0.094, 0 0.094, 0 0.094 of moles of carbon dioxide. Multiply this by 24, 0 0.094, multiply by 24, what you will get? 2.256, 2.256 dm cube. So this can't be the correct answer also. What about D? Adding 50 centimeter cube of 
वन मोर पर डीएम क्यूब सल्फेरिक एसिड टू एन एक्सेस ऑफ कॉपर कार्बोनेट नाउ लेट्स सी द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द मोस्ट ऑफ एस टू एस फोर एंड सीओ टू सेम वन मोल गिव्स वन मोल सो फिफ्टी सेंटीमीटर क्यूब ऑफ वन मोल पर डीएम क्यूब सो फिफ्टी मल्टीप्लाई बाय वन डिवाइडेड बाय वन थाउजेंड इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट द मोस्ट ऑफ सल्फेरिक एसिड वी हैव पॉइंट जीरो फाइव मोस ऑफ सीओ टू Definitely, this can't be the correct answer because if you we'll multiply 0.05 by 24, you will get what 1.2, 1.2 dm cube. So this can't be the correct answer. Also, so B must be the right answer. 2.5, uh, 2.4 dm cube is the greatest volume of carbon dioxide produced at room temperature and pressure. Number ten. Chrome alum is the common name for a salt which has the formula. CrKSO42. What is the percentage by mass of chromium in chrome alum? So for this, first of all, we need to find the MR of chrome alum. CrKSO4 whole twice. We have chromium, potassium, sulfur, oxygen. Here is chromium. Where is chromium? Fifty-two is the AR for chromium. Potassium thirty-nine, sulfur thirty-two, oxygen sixteen. So fifty-two for chromium, thirty-nine for potassium. As both of these are one atoms. What about sulfur? We have two atoms of sulfur. So two multiply by thirty-two plus two four is eight. Eight multiply by sixteen for oxygen. So what you will get? Fifty-two plus thirty-two plus two multiply by thirty-two. Fifty-two plus thirty-two. Sorry, thirty-nine plus two multiplied by thirty-two, sixty-four plus eight multiplied by sixteen, eight six of forty-eight. Four plus eight, twelve, one twenty-eight. Adding up these, what we will get? Fifty-two plus thirty-nine plus sixty-four plus one twenty-eight. Two eighty-three. Two eighty-three is the MR. So they are asking the percentage by mass of chromium. So you will multiply fifty-two by hundred and divide it by two eighty-three. So what we will get? Eighteen point three seven four, which means eighteen point four. This must be the right answer for number ten. Number eleven. The equation shows the production of iron by the reduction of iron three oxide, Fe two O three plus three CO gives two Fe plus three CO two. Eighty tons of iron three oxide produces fifty tons of iron. What is the percentage yield? They are asking percentage yield of iron. So for this, we need the MR of iron three oxide and AR of Fe. we will consider these in tons so that we can find the exact tons of iron produced for 80 tons of iron 3 oxide then this will help us in calculating the percentage yield of iron so mr of fe2o3 we have three atoms of fe sorry two atoms of fe where is fe here is fe 56 oxygen Is oxygen sixteen? So two multiplied by fifty six plus three multiplied by sixteen, what you will get? Two multiplied by fifty six. Two six are twelve. Ten plus one, eleven hundred and twelve. Plus three multiplied by six, eighteen. Three plus one, four, forty eight. One one two plus four eight gives 
160, 160 tons for Fe203. What about Fe? Mr. Fe. We have two atoms of Fe. That's why I'm writing Mr. Fe. To multiply by 56 must be 112. So, according to the equation, 160 tons Fe2O3 gives 112 tons Fe. Therefore, 80 tons gives X tons of Fe. If you look at this, 80 is exactly half of 160. So, you must get half of 112, which must be 56, 56 tons. So, 56 tons is the mass we must get, but we are getting 50 tons. So, what you will do, 50 multiply, 50 multiply by 100 and divided by 56. Eighty nine point two eight five. So D must be the right answer in this case. Number twelve. Aqueous copper two sulfate is electrolyzed using copper electrodes. Which row correctly describes what happens? Now they are using copper electrodes. Remember when you are using copper electrodes for the electrolysis of aqueous copper salt like copper two sulfate or copper two nitrate. So what will happen at cathode, at cathode, mass decreases and at anode, sorry, this is a mistake, there is increase in mass at cathode because copper ion will get deposited at cathode, Cu2 plus ion will get deposited at cathode. So, mass of the cathode will increase. What will happen at anode? In return, at anode, in order to compensate the loss of Cu2 plus ion in the solution, anode dissolves, which means mass decreases. So, this will continue until all of the anode uh, get dissolved. So, the color of the solution remains blue. So, mass of cathode increases. So, either and anode it decreases so it must be C because in C you see the mass of anode decreasing and mass of cathode increasing and the color of the solution remains blue copper to sulfate is blue in color number 13 hydrogen dx with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride H2 gas plus HCl2 gas gives 2 HCl G the enthalpy change delta H for this reaction can be calculated using Bohr energies. What is the value of delta H for this reaction? We need to calculate the delta H. You know the formula for delta H. Energy needed to break bond minus energy released to make bond. So, we have H2 plus Cl2 gives 2 HCl. So, H2, H bond H plus Cl bond Cl. So, HH 436 plus Cl2 242 minus 2 HCl means HCl, 2 moles of HCl. So, we will multiply 2 by 431. What we will get? 436 plus 2, 42. 6 plus 2 is 8. 4 plus 3 is 7. 2 plus 4 is 6. 678. 678 minus 2 multiplied by 431. It must be 862. 678 minus 862 minus 184 minus 184. So, B must be the right answer for number 13. Moving to next question, number 14. 
nitrogen and oxygen react as shown. N2G plus 2O2G gives 2NO2G. The enthalpy change for the reaction shown is plus 66 kilojoule. If two moles of nitrogen and two moles of oxygen are used, what will be the enthalpy change? If you look at this equation, there is one mole of N2 and two moles of oxygen. In the question, they are saying that they have increased the mole of nitrogen. That is, they have increased from one mole to two moles. But they kept the moles of oxygen as two, which means oxygen becomes limiting here. Limiting reactant. And nitrogen becomes nitrogen becomes excess reactant. So in order to calculate the, the enthalpy change, we will focus on the limiting reactant, which is 2O2 here. So the enthalpy change remains same, that is plus 66 kilojoules. So C must be the right answer for 14. Moving to number 15. Physical changes and chemical changes can occur in substances. Which process describes a chemical change? Remember, chemical change, you will always get new substances. New substances are produced. This is a typical of a chemical change. Covalent bonds in methane molecules are broken. This looks correct to me because if we break the bonds in methane, you will definitely get a new substance. B, intermolecular attractions between water molecules are broken. This is not a chemical chain. The reason is that it's only uh, decreasing the attraction between water molecules. We are breaking the intermolecular attraction between water molecules. This is an intermolecular attraction. We have HOH, the water molecule. This is another HOH. So this is the intermolecular force, this is broken. This will not produce new substance. This will only separate one water molecule to another water molecule. C ionic bonds in sodium chloride lattice are broken. So if you break the ionic bonds in sodium chloride lattice, you are not breaking the electrostatic force. Here's a structure of sodium chloride. We have Na plus, Cl minus. I'm drawing the small part of it because the space is very limited here. This is electrostatic attraction. This one is electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic attraction, if you break the electrostatic attraction, this will uh, break the, 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 uh, the uh, attraction between the sodium plus and Cl negative ion. So, we are not breaking the electrostatic attraction. Instead, you are breaking the ionic bonds. So this is also incorrect. This is not the chemical change. This can be a physical change. You are physically separating one sodium chloride uh, uh, unit from other sodium chloride unit. D, the manufacturing of brass from copper and zinc. You are not making new substance because brass is a mixture. Brass is a mixture. It's uh, we are making mixture from copper and zinc, so this is not a chemical change. So A must be the right answer in this case. 16. Two methods used by students to measure the rate of a reaction are the disappearing cross method and the loss of mass method. For the disappearing cross method, the student measures the time taken for the reaction mixture go, to go cloudy. For the loss of mass method, the student measures the loss of mass over a known time interval, the rates of two reactions are investigated. Reaction 1, warm aqueous silver nitrate is added to chlorobutane dissolved in ethanol. Two products are formed. One is an organic compound which is soluble in ethanol. Other is silver chloride which is insoluble in ethanol. This must indicate that the solution going cloudy. Okay. Reaction 2, pieces of solid calcium carbonate are added to dilute hydrochloric acid. In this, you are making three products. One product must be calcium chloride, which is soluble in water. The other product is water, H2O. 
and the third product is carbon dioxide which is a gas it will release in the air which method should be used for each reaction no in one the solution goes cloudy which means there must be disappearing cross method be used in this case so either a is correct or b is correct both c and d is incorrect what about reaction 2 in reaction 2, it involves the loss of mass because carbon dioxide produced is a gas. One of the product is gas here. So, B must be the right answer in this case. Number 17, hydrogen is used as a reactant both in Haber process and in its addition to alkenes, which row is correct. The catalyst used in the Haber process is iron. So, either C is correct or, sorry, either a is correct or B is correct, both C and D is incorrect. What about the product of addition of hydrogen in alkene? If you add hydrogen to alkene, you will always get alkene. So A must be the right answer in this case. B is also incorrect. 18. Chlorine Cl2 reacts with iron 2 Fe2 plus ions. Cl2 plus 2 Fe2 plus gives 2 Cl minus plus 2 Fe3 plus. Which statement about this reaction is correct? Now, in this reaction, is chlorine is oxidized. If you look at the charge, the charge is minus 1, which means it gains electrons. It is reduced. It's not oxidized. So, what about the other reactant? It is oxidized. It's not reduced. And it has lost electron this is increase in oxidation number for fe 2 plus this decrease in oxidation number of cl2 so this statement is incorrect b cl negative ions are formed by loss of electron no it is produced by the gain of electrons this is also wrong c fe 2 plus ions have gained electrons this is also incorrect because it has lost electron d fe 3 plus ions are formed by oxidation this is correct because it is formed by oxidation question number 19 which statement is correct? A. A base will react with an ammonium salt to produce a gas that turns damp blue litmus paper red. This is incorrect because a base reacting with ammonium salt it produces a gas. It does not turn blue litmus paper red. It will turn red to blue. So this is incorrect. B. Adding a base to an acidic solution will increase the pH of the solution. This is correct. Because the pH of the acid solution is low, when you add a base, it will get neutralized and the pH of the solution will definitely increase. See, aqueous sodium hydroxide is an alkali but not a base. This is wrong. All alkali are bases. D. In a neutralization reaction, a base donates a proton to an acid. This is also incorrect because base is a proton acceptor, not donor. So, B will be the right answer for 19. Number 20. Information about three oxides, Q, R, and T is given. Q reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to form a salt and water. R reacts with both acids and bases to form a salt and water. T reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a salt and water. Using only this information, which row correctly classifies the three oxides? So Q is reacting with dilute acid and it's producing salt and water. So Q must be basic. So either C is correct or D is correct. Both A and B is incorrect. Now I've narrowed down your choice. It will become easier for you to select the best and right answer answer. R reacts with both acids and bases to form a salt and water. So it must be amphoteric. So D looks correct to me. I am confirming the answer. Let's see the last one. D reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide to form a salt and water. It must be acidic oxide. So D must be the right answer for number 20. 21. Which definition of a hydrated substance is correct? A hydrated substance is a soluble ionic compound such as barium sulfate. Barium sulfate is not hydrated. 
if it's high rated it must contain must contain water in it it's not containing water b a hydrated substance is an ionic compound that contains no water this is also incorrect hydrated substance must contain water in it which means it get attached to the salt crystalline salt c a hydrated substance is one that is chemically combined with hydrogen this is also incorrect only d will be left this is the correct statement a hydrated substance is one that is chemically combined with water for example copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate cuso4.5h2o it's copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate Twenty-two. A student has five reagents: dilute hydrochloric acid, dilute sulfuric acid, dilute nitric acid, solid calcium carbonate, solid copper two carbonate. How many soluble salts can be prepared from these five reagents? Now, if you react hydrochloric acid with calcium chloride, you will get calcium hydrochloric acid with calcium carbonate. You will get calcium chloride. So this will be the one soluble salt. If you react hydrochloric acid with copper two carbonate, you will get copper two chloride as a salt. It is also soluble. So one plus one. If you react react dilute sulfuric acid with calcium carbonate, you will get calcium sulfate. It is not soluble salt. Calcium sulfate is insoluble. What if you react sulfuric acid with copper two carbonate? You will get copper two sulfate. It is soluble salt. What if you react nitric acid with calcium carbonate? You will get calcium nitrate. It's a soluble salt. What if you react nitric acid with copper two carbonate? We'll get copper two nitrate. It's also soluble, so there must be five soluble salts that can be made from these five reagents. C is the right answer. Twenty-three. The table shows the number of electrons in one atom of each of the elements W, X, Y, and Z. So in W, there are number of electrons in one atom nine, X it's fifteen, Y it's nineteen, Z is thirty-five. Which statement is correct? A. W and Z. Are in the same group. W is nine, and Z thirty-five. Let's see, nine and thirty-five. Here's nine. Is thirty-five. Nine electrons, thirty-five electrons. Same group, group seven. So this statement looks correct to me. For your convenience, I am reading the other statements. B X is a metal. X containing fifteen electrons. Fifteen electrons. Where is fifteen electrons? Here is fifteen electrons. It's in group five. It's not a metal. It's a non-metal. This is incorrect. C X and Y will form the compound X three Y. So for this, we need to see the valency of X and Y. X containing fifteen electrons. Y containing nineteen. X and Y. Here is X. It's in group five. Nineteen potassium. It's in group one. Plus one, minus three. So three plus one. Ignore their charges. What you will get? One and three. X Y three. This is incorrect. Formula is incorrect. Y is a non-metal. Why is not a non-metal? Because proton number is nineteen, number of electrons nineteen, which means it's a metal. So also incorrect. So A will be the right answer for number twenty-three. Moving to next question. Some properties of elements in group seven and reasons for these properties are shown. Which row shows a property and the reason for this property? For A, 
all the elements exist as diatomic molecules and the reason is that each atom has seven electrons in the outer shell and can share a pair of electrons. This statement looks correct to me because group seven elements, where is group seven? Here is group seven. We have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and tenacide. They all exist at diatomic state and they have seven electrons in their outer shell because of the group number. It indicates the number of electrons in the valence shell and then can, they can share a pair of electrons to form a diatomic molecule. So this statement looks correct to me. B, the elements are classified as metals. This is incorrect. No need to read the other statement. If one is wrong, no need to re uh, read the uh, reason for the property. C, iron displaces bromine from aqueous potassium bromide. This is also incorrect because iodine here is iodine, it's below bromine. So it can't displace bromine. Bromine is more reactive than iodine, this is also incorrect. D, the boiling point increases as a group is descended. Now the boiling point increases, this statement is correct. Now what is the reason? As a group is descended, it becomes harder to break the covalent bonds between the atoms. We don't have atoms, we have the molecules. They exist as molecules. So we have to break the bond between the molecules. This statement is incorrect. So only A will be the right answer for 24. 25. Aircraft manufacture requires a metal that number one has a relatively low density. Number two is resistant to corrosion. Which properties apply to aluminum? Aluminum has a low density. It is also resistant to corrosion somewhat because it forms a protective oxide layer but according to me one should be the right answer uh, one should be the uh, right answer for aluminium uh, two should not be applied to aluminium it is not resistant to corrosion because it forms protective oxide layer which means it is not resistant, completely resistant to corrosion. But if you can consider this uh, protective layer as acting as a barrier, then you can say it's resistant to corrosion. So both A and T is applicable to al aluminum in this case. So A must be the right answer. That's what marking key says. Which diagram represents an alloy? An alloy is a mixture of metals. It must have different size metal atoms mixed together. So in this case, D must be the right answer. A is a structure for graphite. B is a structure for pure metal. And C is a structure for diamond. So D must be the right answer for 26. 27. A small piece of metal is added to a large beaker of water. A vigorous reaction occurs. When the reaction stops, a few drops litmus are added to the solution. What is the metal and which color is the solution after the litmus is added? This simply indicates that uh, the metal added is one of the reactive metals. So you have two metals here. We have calcium and magnesium. Which one is more reactive? Definitely calcium is more reactive than magnesium. So either A is correct or B is correct. Both C and D is incorrect. Now, you have added the litmus solution, uh, litmus, few drops of litmus to the solution. What you will get when you add calcium to water? When you add calcium to water, you will get metal hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is an alkali. And hydrogen gas is produced and it will turn red litmus paper to blue. So A must be the right answer for 27. 28. The rusting of iron can be prevented by coating the iron with another metal material. Which statement explains why coating with zinc is more effective than painting? A. If the coating is damaged, zinc corrodes instead of iron. This looks correct to me because zinc is more reactive than iron. It will corrode instead of iron. B. Iron is above zinc in the reactivity series. It does not explain this if iron is more reactive than zinc then iron must be reacting 
so it is not the right statement c zinc does not react with air or water is also incorrect it is it does react with air and water d zinc forms an unreactive alloy coating with iron is also incorrect it must be reacting or corro corrosion will take place so a must be the right answer for 28 29 the list shows the position of metal X in the reactivity series of metals. We have Na, Al, Fe, X, Cu, Ag. Which methods could be used to extract metal X? Now, X is between copper and iron. So, the top of the series metals uh, undergo electrolysis method. And in the middle, uh, or after the middle, you are having metals which uh, need the reducing agents. So we don't have electrolysis method for the solid metal oxide in this case. It's among the more reactive, not highly reactive metals. So we can't uh, go for the electrolysis method. Heating the metal oxide with carbon, it looks right to me. I'm reading the, the statement of heating the metal oxide with copper. It will not have because copper is less reactive than this metal X. So two must be the right answer. So C is the right answer for 29. 30. Which statement about water is correct? A. Distillation is used to remove insoluble impurities from the domestic water supply. This is incorrect because we can't use distillation to remove insoluble impurities. We are removing soluble impurities during distillation. B, water containing impurities turns anhydrous, copper to sulfate blue. Yes, water even if contains, it contains impurities. It's, it does change the color of anhydrous copper to sulfate to blue. So B looks correct to me. For your convenience, I'm reading the other statements. Water containing impurities turns cobalt to fluoride paper blue. No, it turns to pink, not blue. This is incorrect. D, water containing impurities boils at 100 degrees centigrade. This is also incorrect. It's impure. It does not boil at 100 degrees centigrade. The boiling point will definitely increase due to the presence of impurities. So B will be the right answer for number 30. 31, some compounds that can be used as fertilizers are listed. We have ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, potassium phosphate, sodium phosphate. Three of the elements required for plant growth have the atomic numbers N, P, and K. How many of these three elements are present in each of the compounds? So in ammonium nitrate, what we have, what is the formula of ammonium nitrate? Ammonium nitrate, the formula is NH4NO3. So we have only N here. So either A is correct, or B is correct. Both C and D is incorrect. Now, I have narrowed down the choices. It become easier for us to choose the best answer. What about potassium nitrate? The formula for potassium nitrate is Ken, K and O3. We have two elements. K and N. So, it must be B. B must be the right answer. For your convenience, I am counting the Elements for potassium phosphate and sodium phosphate. Potassium phosphate is K3PO4. So K and P. So these are the two elements present. So it must be two. What about sodium phosphate? Sodium phosphate is Na3PO4. So there is only P present. So B must be the right answer in this case. 32. Different strategies to reduce the effects of environmental issues have been suggested. Which row is correct? Strategy to reduce the effects of climate change. Strategy to reduce the effects of acid rain. Now, if you reduce uh, in livestock farming, that will, this will definitely reduce the uh, uh, effects of climate change. So, reduction in livestock farming. But the reduction in use of renewable energy does not reduce the effect of climate change because renewable energy is uh, the one we are looking for. Renewable energy is the one which replaces. Once used up, can be replaced. Livestock farming reduces uh, the production of methane gas, 
विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ग्लोबल वार्मिंग इट्स अ क्लाइमेट चेंज सो आइदर ए इज करेक्ट और बी इज करेक्ट बोथ सी एंड डी इज इन करेक्ट वट अबाउट स्ट्रेटेजी टू रिड्यूस द इफेक्ट ऑफ एसिडेंट यू कैन यूज लो सल्फर फ्यूल्स बिकॉज सल्फर फ्यूज वेन बर्न प्रोड्यूस ऑक्साइड ऑफ सल्फर which when mixed with clouds produces acid rains so b must be the right answer for 32 33 which statement about organic compounds is correct a each molecule of propane one all has one oh group and each molecule of propane two all has two oh group this is incorrect because of formula for propane one all here is propane one all it has one oh group We have three carbon. One, two, three. It's at the position one. OH is at the position one. So this is correct. It has one OH group. But what about propane two all? They are saying it contains two OH group. This is the formula for propane two all. We have three carbon again. One, two. Three. This time, OH is placed at carbon number two. So there isn't any two OH group. So A is incorrect in this case. What about B? Octane and decane are in a homologous series with the general formula C and H one. This is wrong because they belongs to the homologous series alkene. So general formula is C and H. 2n plus 2, so this is also incorrect. C, the ester butyl butanoate has eight carbon atoms in each molecule. This is a formula for butyl butanoate. Four carbon atoms: one, two, three, four. Double bond O, O. Butyl: one, two, three, four. These all are hydrogen atoms. I am not drawing, showing the hydrogen atoms. Because this will save our time, so we have eight carbon atoms in each molecule. So this looks correct to me. C must be the right answer for your convenience. I am reading the last statement. Structure of the functional group in carboxylic acid is C double O H. This is incorrect because it's C double bond O or bond O O H. So C is the right answer. Thirty four. In the fractional distillation of petroleum, different fractions are obtained at the top and bottom of the fractionating column. Which properties does the fraction obtained at the top of the fractionating column have compared with the fraction obtained at the bottom? Higher viscosity. The fraction obtained at the top of the uh, column are having low carbon chain. They have they have low melting point, low boiling point. They are highly volatile. they have low viscosity so this is incorrect what about two low boiling point lower boiling point this is correct lower vol volatility this is also incorrect because they are highly volatile for shorter chain length this is also correct so c must be the right answer in this case 35 a chlorine atom can replace a hydrogen atom in a molecule of butane ch3 ch2 ch2 ch3 to form chlorobutane How many different structural isomers of chlorobutane can be formed? I am drawing the isomers for chlorobutane. You can place chlorobutane at any one of uh, these position. Like uh, if I will place at carbon number one, so you will get CH three, CH two, CH two, CH two, Cl. This is one possibility. If I will change the position of this chlorine to carbon number two, is one, two, three, four. So we'll have CH three, CH two, CH two. Sorry, CHCl, CHCl, and CH three. So this is possibility number two. If you place the carbon at position number two. What if I will change the position of one of the uh, methyl group, that is CH three? So the third possibility will be like this: CH three, C, CH three, C 
in fact it should be ch ch3 and we'll have ch2 cl yes this will be the third possibility so it should be c it should be c but the marking scheme it says b i don't know why they are saying c they have to mention with respect to different position of chlorine if we'll talk with respect to different position of chlorine then the answer must be two there will be two structural isomers but when you are saying structural isomers of chlorobutane then it must be three so b is the right answer for this question 36 two statements are shown number one when ethanol is made from glucose by fermentation each glucose molecule produces three molecules of ethanol number two when ethanolic acid is made from ethanol the ethanol acts as an oxidizing agent which row about these statements is correct so both of these statements are incorrect because ethanol is made from glucose by fermentation each glucose molecule produces three molecules of ethanol this is wrong it produces only one molecule of ethanol so this is incorrect statement but about two ethanoic acid is made from ethanol ethanol is not acting as an oxidizing agent it is acting as an as a reducing agent so d must be the right answer for 36 37 polymer x is an addition polymer the monomer used to make x is but one e polymer y is a condensation polymer the monomers used to make y are hoch2 ch2 oh and h double o c ch2 c double oh which statement about x and y is correct the repeat unit of x is ch ch3 ch CH3 and Y is a polyamide. So what about the repeat unit for but one e This is but one e One, two, three, four. Because double bond is at position one. This is but one e So if you draw the polymer from this what you will get you will get this i am considering this group as c2h5 this is c2h5 so this must be the polymer obtained this is one of the repeat unit so this is incorrect so no need to look at the other statement if it's incorrect b the repeat unit of x is ch ch3 ch ch3 again this is incorrect no need to read the next statement. C, the repeat unit of X is CH2, CH, C2H5. This looks correct. Now read the last one. Y is a polyamide. What about Y? Y is obtained from HO, CH2, CH2, OH plus H double O, C, CH2, C double OH. So there must be loss of water molecule here. So we will get this CH2, CH2 and OO, the polymer must be like this, C, O, C double bond, O, CH2, again you will get CH2, these all are H. So this must be polyester group. It's not polyamide. So D must be the right answer, obviously. In this case, both of these are correct. The last, the Y is polyester and the repeat unit for X is this. 38, which statement is correct? A, a filtrate is a substance that remains on the filter paper after filtration. This is incorrect. B, a saturated solution has a maximum amount of solvent dissolved in the solute. No saturated solu uh, solution has a maximum amount of solute, not solvent. C, a solution is a compound produced when a solute reacts with a solvent. This is wrong. Solution is not a compound, some mixture. Some mixture. 
Furthermore, solute does not react with the solvent. D, a substance that remains in the heated flask after distillation is called a residue. This is correct. D is a correct statement. 39. The diagram shows a chromatogram which spot has an RF value of 0.75. So you need to work out the RF value for A, B, C and D. Look for A. The distance traveled by A, it must be like uh, 2.25. Divided by distance traveled by solvent, it's uh, 9. So for what you'll get? 2.25 divided by 9. 0.25. So this is incorrect. What about B? B is 3 divided by 9. You divide 3 by 9, what you'll get? 0 0.33. So this is also incorrect. What about C? C is 7 divided by 9. 0.77. This looks correct to me. What about D? D is 7.5. 7.5 divided by 9. Point eight three. So D C must be the right answer in this case. Forty. The results of some tests on polluted river water are shown. Reagent aqueous sodium hydroxide observation slowly uh, adding reagent. White precipitate observations on adding excess reagent precipitate dissolves to give a colorless solution. So it can be either Zn2 plus or Al3 plus. Now, with aqueous ammonia, observation on adding reagent slowly, white precipitate, observation on adding excess reagent, no further change. So, this must be Al3 plus because white precipitate is remaining. It's not soluble. So, A must be the right answer in this case. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. For more videos, subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon.